am, I am. Be there, Charlie. I'm back at it again, man. Love all of y'all. I got some more information for y'all on the black youngster and his brother situation. And I also have information on Rondo number nine, his paperwork. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people were speculating that uh, Say 600 was snitching, man. Now the paperwork has been all over the internet circulating to let y'all know who's been snitching. Everybody's pointing the finger at Rondo right now, you know what I'm saying, because of the appeal situation. Now they point the finger at him. But don't forget to hit that like and that subscribe button for me, man. Love all, all of y'all out there, man. Hit that, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for me, man. And just uh, social support to the channel. And remember, donate to the channel so we can keep on evolving. Cash tag, billionaire, Charlie, man. And I appreciate the real ones that all donate and uh, support the channel and subscribe to the channel. Love y'all. appreciate y'all. Don't forget that. Come check out my other YouTube channel, This Journey Called Life, where we talk about great and amazing topics. Me and my wife, man. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's get into this, man. They also got rumors that uh, Young Dolph have been uh, laughing or or making fun of black youngster because of the situation, you know what I'm saying? And um, I seen a couple of bloggers put that out there like that, you know what I'm saying? We laughing and um, making fun of the situation, which my condolences go to black youngster, man, you know what I'm saying? And um, what I seen, I, I, you know how the internet can make things, put pieces together and stuff like that, so... We ain't gonna just uh, uh, live off that because the internet is crazy. They'll put a picture, an old picture of Dolph, and say he was laughing at the situation. They won't even Dolph laughing at the situation. But yes, I did see the the uh, the the, uh, the little video or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, man, the internet is a wicked world, a wicked place. So they could be doing false stuff with that. You know what I'm saying? Just animating some stuff. Like, boy, you, you'll be surprised how these computer geeks are out today to make it a look like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I haven't confirmed. I ain't see Dolph confirm that or whatever, man. But I did see the the um, the um little joint that they put together on the live or whatever, making it look like Dolph was laughing at a uh, uh, black youngster or whatever. But like I said, Michael Donis is to him, man. He lost two brothers, man. A younger brother, you know what I'm saying? An older brother, man. So... It's crazy, man. The streets is very, very, very cold-hearted, man. They don't give a care about nothing, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I always tell people, man. You gotta when you get when you start doing better, you gotta you gotta begin to make your team better, everything around you better, and just get away from those areas that you know people are hating on you. You know what I'm saying? Cause like people are always talking about, let's go back to the hood, let's go back to this for what? Live your life, man. For real, man. That's just fat, though. But I'm going to let y'all listen to this thing of the paperwork being exposed on the Rondo number nine, man. Y'all tell me what y'all think about it. I love y'all, man. Keep on tuning in. I am Billionaire Charlie. It automatically becomes case law just in case you get your case overturned or even if you don't get your case returned, but you get an issue accepted and other people could possibly use it on their appeals that's how your case becomes case law and as anybody that's ever been convicted of a crime and in, in the world as long as they appeal their case you can look it up even if they lost they don't have to win just as long as they appealed it you can look their case up now hold on one second like i said all right now is clint massey which is rondo number nine he's the defendant and the appeal all right so Let's start off right here. The presiding judge, Judge Mason, delivers the judgment of the court with opinion. Justice Lavin and Hyman concur in the ground and the judgment and opinion. This is the opinion. This is when they first tell you about the case, and it tells you what he using, what appeal rights is he trying to use. All right. So, the defendant, Clinton Massey, which is Rondo number nine. And his co-defendant, Courtney Elay, which is e, uh, Seabay, were convicted of murder in the shooting death of Javon Boyd. The state's evidence showed that Boyd, a private taxi driver, was waiting for his fare when Massey and Eday approached the taxi and shot Boyd. Although there was conflicting evidence as to who did the actual shooting. Now, this is where the telling part come in at. On appeal, Massey who is Rondo number nine, argues that I, his counsel was ineffective. Ineffective assistance of counsel is what a lot of people use for their appeals. That's like the generic version. Like if you don't have no other grounds for appeal, 
the first thing you put in is ineffective assistance of counsel. So everybody use that. No matter what your grounds for appeal are, this is the first thing people use so they don't try to burn out all their appeals from the rip. All right. On appeal, Massey argues that his counsel was ineffective for not more vigorously pursuing a defense theory that Eli, that Eli, that Eli, Ailey, whatever his name is, was the shooter. Now that's it right there. That's he. That's. I don't even have to read anymore, but I'm gonna read anymore. It says on appeal, Massey argues that his counsel, which was his lawyer, was ineffective, not doing a good job, for more vigorously pursuing a defense theory that Ely was the sole shooter. So he's saying, like they was together, they convicted her already. So he basically trying to get his appeal in by saying that C Day was the shooter. But on the same token, even if C Day gets in court, if they grant this appeal for Rondo, then they're going to use this, because as I said, this becomes case law. They're going to use this in e -day, um, C Day trial and say that, well, y'all both convicted for it. Your, your co defendant is saying he was there, he did it, but you was the shooter. So back again, the defense theory that Ely was the sole shooter. The trial court erred in allowing hearsay regarding that Massey was, we was wearing on the night of the murder. A mistrial should have been granted because the victim's family made an outburst during trial. And prior to trial, the court erred in when it conducted a material witness hearing without notice to Massey. We declined to adjudicate Massey's last contention since it relies on matters outside the record and is therefore inappropriate for resolution on direct review, finding no merit in his other claims of error. We affirm. So basically they saying, when they say they affirm and they don't find no merit in it, they basically saying that he ain't got no grounds. But now this is when they actually get in because it was a lot of here say everybody trying to figure out what happened and everybody saying what they think no happened but this is exactly it this is exactly what happened and this is from trial transcripts on the night of february 21st 2014 defendants attended a party at 39th street and wentworth avenue and the wentworth garden housing projects massey wore a tiger stripe jogging suit and ely wore a burberry shirt and white pants also attending the party were caprice johns jasmine brown Jermonte Carpenter, which is Tay 600, to Kay Herbert and Jerome Anderson. Defendants left the party with Herbert and Herbert's van. After they left, Johns, who remained at the party, got into an argument with a group of women known as Pretty in Pink because Johns disliked the song that was being played. As they argued, someone fired a gun into the air multiple times. John did not see who fired the shots, but she guessed that the shooter wanted to stop the argument because it was too loud. Now, Johns, as I just read her name back here, she the one testifying. So, if she not helping the case, she hurting the case, so therefore she telling. But we're going to find out exactly if she telling, because like I said, can't call a person a rat without the paperwork, and we reading the paperwork. The, the gunshots did not hit anyone. After the altercation, Johns left the party with Brown, Carpenter, and Anderson. They left in John's car with Anderson driving. Carpenter made a phone call to either Massey or Ely, who were still with Herbert in her van. And they told them about the altercation at the party. Carpenter put the call on speakerphone, and Brown could hear Ely's voice, which she recognized on the other end. Again, that's uh, C Day. Anderson drove to Wendy's, where they met up with. A red car in Herbert's van. Ely and Massey exited the van and got into the red car, along with a man named D. Rose, a fourth man. Unidentified at trial was the driver. The three vehicles drove towards Wentworth Gardens in a convoy. First the red car, then Herbert's van, then John's car. According to John's, they intended to see who shot at them and deal with the matter. 
And these is the footnotes, so this gives you like a background on it. At trial, Herbert admitted attending the party, but she denied seeing defendants at the party or knowing anything about the shooting. She was impeached with a signed statement she made to Assistant State's Attorney Patrick Walker on March 4th, 2015, where she admitted a sub. See, this is when she trying to take back a statement because everybody's saying she telling, and now the paperwork is out. Part 3 of 17. Meanwhile, Latoya Adams was visiting her mother in Wentworth Gardens around 3 a.m. on the morning of February 22nd. This is another girl's statement. She called for a taxi to go to her friend's house. Boy, who was driving a car that contained no outside identification that it was a vehicle for hire, which was dispatched to the call. So I don't know how Chicago cabs is, but down here in Philly, our cabs got the cab on the side of them. You know, it say taxi or cab. Might have been an Uber, but anyway, they say he was dispatched to call. As the three convoy vehicle approached 38th Street and Princeton Avenue, they passed boys sitting in a parked car waiting to pick up Adams. The three vehicles all made a U-turn and came to a stop. Massey, Ely, and D. Rose exited the rear vehicle and approached Boyd's car from the passenger side. Both Herbert and Johns witnessed the shooting. Herbert saw Massey and Ely open Boyd's passenger side door and then saw Massey firing a gun into the car, which is Rondo number 9. She heard four or five gunshots, after which Massey and Ely returned to the red car and drove away. Now, this girl actually told, whether she take it back or not, she put Rondo number nine as the shooter. According to Johns, Massey and Ely spoke to Boy, and then Johns saw a light flash from the gun and Boy jumping as if he was getting shot. At trial, Johns said she did not see the actual gun, but in a prior statement to detectives, Johns identified Ely as the shooter. After the shooting, D. Rose ran back to Johns' car, got inside, saying, shit, and he's dead. Massey and Ely ran back to one of the other vehicles, and all three vehicles drove away as they left. Johns could see boys slumped over in the car. So now there's another witness saying that C. Day did the shooting. Number 22. The shooting was captured on surveillance cameras belonging to the Chicago Housing Authority, which owns the Wentworth Gardens Housing Project. The video footage was played for the jury. In the videos, three vehicles drove past boys' vehicles and then drove back the other way. The convoy leader, a red car stopped next to Boyd's vehicle and two men got out, one wearing a striped tracksuit, Massey, and the other wearing a brown shirt and white pants, Ely. They approached Boyd's car from the front passenger side and appeared to be talking to him. Now again, this is actual paperwork. So forget what everybody's saying, who telling this, who telling that. This is the actual black and white statement, 4950. That's what it's called. Boy's car started backing up, but hit a vehicle parked a couple feet behind him. At this point, D. Rose got out of the red car and ran back towards John's car. There was a bright flash of light near Ely's hand. Boy's car surged forward and hit another parked car. Massey and Ely ran forward to look in the front passenger window. Ely returned to the red car. Massey followed him. A few moments later, and the three vehicles drove away. Back to another statement. Adams came outside to pick her, pick up her ride and found Boy hanging out the driver's side of his car. She asked him if he was okay. He did not respond. Someone else had already called the police, so Adams called the taxi company to inform them that their driver had been shot. She then remained at the scene and cooperated. She then remained at the scene and cooperated. She then remained at the scene and cooperated for you fucking dummies with police when they arrived. After leaving the scene of the shooting, all three vehicles drove to the Shell gas station at 55th Street. And then you know that gas station got them on tape. Video surveillance footage from the gas station show Ely walking towards John's car. This one they're going to be able to tell who is who by the tracksuit and the Burberry shirt because it's going to probably catch their face. Massey did not appear in the video. So Rondo was still in the car, but they could pick out what, who face was shown on the camera and what they had on by who they was. According to Johns, Elay entered the vehicle, told her that he dropped his iPhone at the scene of the crime and asked her to help him retrieve it. 
Edie also told Johns about the shooting. He said that he asked the victim if he was from around here and specified the part of Wentworth Gardens where the party had been. The victim said he was. Ely then said man down, which Johns understood to mean the victim was dead. I'll be seeing a lot of cases, right? Where a lot, even in my hood, a lot of these niggas be taking their phone when they're going to go park something. And they take 55 people. That's why everybody testify on you dudes. And everybody got paperwork. You calling them a rat, but you a failure from the rip because you need three or four people with you to kill somebody. I was told the only way three people can keep a secret is if two of them did. You don't need nobody to go by, go with you. You're the only person they can tell on you when you by yourself. And then you dropping, always dropping something. This nigga dropped his phone with his with his um, Apple ID on there, probably credit card, like a little, you know, a cash app card. But all your information, Instagram, everything on there. Anyway, Johns drove down back to the scene of the crime, but police had already cordoned off the area and would not allow her to enter. Officers did, in fact, find an iPhone in the middle of the street near the vehicle, victim's vehicle. Slam dunk. A late impression removed from Boyd's passenger side window was identified as belonging to Ely. Slam dunk. Ely's fingerprint was found was not found at the scene. Inside Boyd's car, the police recovered three 9mm fire cartridge cases and two 9mm fire bullets additionally. So that means the bullets went through them and came out somewhere because the cartridges is just a shell. The police recovered three 9mm fire cartridge cases and three 9mm fire bullets. Additionally, the medical examiner recovered two more bullets from Boyd's body. From Boyd's chest. Excuse me. Kellen Hunter, a firearm examiner for the Illinois State Police, determined that the bullets were all fired from a single gun and the cartridge cases were all fired from a single gun. He was unable to determine whether the bullets and cartridges were fired from the same gun since it is impossible to match a fire bullet to a fire cartridge case. For y'all that don't know, whenever somebody shoot somebody or they use a gun in the crime and they do ballistics, the actual hot lead, the bullet that which comes out the casing that tears your ass up is not what they match to. Because all it is is a hot piece of metal that takes form of whatever it hit so it's basically a fat surface a chunk or a straight bullet what they use is the casing each gun has a unique signature when the hammer hits the back of the bullet when a hammer hits the back of the bullet it makes a signature on it just like a fingerprint and what they do is they identify that signature by firing another gun I'm in firing her, that gun to see if the shell cases match. Now, if they don't have the gun, then when they do find the gun, they use the casing. Or if they have another crime that was committed and they found shell cases on the ground, then they match them. That's why you need a shell catcher or a revolver or pick your shit up or don't kill nobody. Before, before to trial, the trial court asked Ely's counsel if she was moving for severance, counsel responded that she didn't had not yet filed the motion, but she could file it later that day. The trial court asked the basis for the motion to which Ely counsel replied, we're just moving to make a motion for severance. That's our sole basis. That's because them niggas start basically flipping on each other from the rip. When you go for a severance, that mean, that usually mean that one of y'all look a, more, a little more guilty than the other person. So when they separate the trial, then you can't, your name can't be used in the other person's trial and the other person can't be used in yours, but they can use that evidence to show that it was another person who did it and not you. Anybody that ever been to trial for anything serious know that or been a trial period, that's how the court system works. That's usually a good move if the evidence point to your, your rapping, which is a co-defendant, and not so much as you, you get it severed. All right, now, the state responded that the severance was not necessary because the defendant made a statement and all other witnesses and evidence go to both defendants. So one of them niggas made a statement on himself. The court then denied the motion. Massey's private 
privately retained counsel was not present when this occurred. So Rondo had a lawyer and a paid lawyer and C-Day must didn't. He was apparently late to court that day. When he arrived, the court informed him that Ely had made a motion for severance that was denied. Massey's counsel did not object, nor did he orally request he file his own motion for severance. In closing argument, Massey's counsel argued that state witnesses were telling the police nonsense about who the shooter were in order to avoid being charged with the murder themselves. He pointed out that Massey was not present for the altercation at the party. His voice was not heard on Carpenter's phone call to Ely, and his face could not be identified in the blurry surveillance video of the shooting. Massey's counsel also stated, of those three witnesses, did any one of them point to my client and say he was the shooter? None. Likewise, Ely argued, not one single witness took a stand and said that Courtney Ely shot a weapon. There is no testimony that Courtney Ely ever shot a gun, and I am not insinuating that Clan Massey shot a gun. I am insinuating that those women on the stand had reason to lie. Defendants were tried before a single jury for both defendants. The state sought a conviction for first-degree murder and a 15-year sentence enhancement for being armed with a firearm during the commission of offense. That's called felony murder. Whenever a felony happens, um, whenever a murder is committed in the process of a felony, it becomes felony murder and eligible for the death penalty, which is first-degree murder. Defendants were tried before a single jury for both defendants who the, the conviction for first-degree murder and a 15-year enhancement. The jury was instructed concerning accountability as to both the murder and the firearm allegation. The, the jury returned a general verdict finding both defendants guilty of first-degree murder, but it found that the firearm allegation was proven only as to Massey. Following statement hearing, the trial court sentenced Massey to 39 years in prison. That nigga got 39 years, y'all. That's a lot of tick. Alright. Now this is the analyst. This is like the sum up. Massey argues that his trial counsel was ineffective for not more vigorously pursuing a defense theory that Ely was the sole shooter. Now that's the part that I'm getting at when I'm saying that Rondo number 9 is telling. But he using his lawyer to do the telling. Because he he his whole thing is I'm gonna blow this up for you dummies. What he's saying is that my lawyer ain't vigorously defend me like he ain't get aggressive and say that I wasn't the shooter, but that C Day was the sole shooter. Like I ain't shoot nothing, and I wasn't there. You ain't hear my voice, none of that shit. This is how you tell without telling. But with everybody that. Everybody that know the paperwork, everybody in Chicago that read the paperwork, everybody that's in the street, a lot of them gang niggas know what this paperwork thing be about because this ain't their first body. This ain't the first body they dealt with. This ain't the first time a man got booked for a body. So the paperwork come out, usually come out. So at the end of the day, Rondo number nine didn't snitch at all. He just said he wasn't the shooter. He did.